Good morning, everybody. Welcome to church. So it's good to see you on this beautiful, sunny Sunday morning in August. And uh, just happy to be here. Happy to see you here. Happy to have you joining us. A uh, couple of announcements. This is August. We're almost to the middle of it. And uh, we are doing the food drive for Henry County Health Center. We have some items back there. Uh, also, tonight at 6.30, our ladies group, tomorrow. Tomorrow. tomorrow night, pardon me, tomorrow night, that's right, Monday night, uh, the ladies will be gathering here at 6.30 to pack hygiene bags. So if you've not gotten your hygiene products and brought those in yet, uh, try to get those in today or tomorrow, or if you're going to bring them with you and uh, help pack those bags tomorrow night. We'll get those to Renata and the Family Resource Center and she'll make sure they'll get to the kids. Uh, she'll make sure they get to the kids who most need them. And there is a, a great need for that, even, even here in America, sadly to say. But uh, I know they'll be greatly appreciated and they'll be a, a big blessing to uh, the kids that get those. Uh, as I was saying before, uh, it's August. This is our third annual food drive for the Henry County Help Center. So when you're out shopping, uh, make sure you grab non-perishable food items to bring in so that we can share with the less fortunate folks uh, here in Henry County. And as I've said before, there are many families with children who have a need but one of the greatest needs here in Henry County are the elderly, who uh, they're just not they're just not making it. They're, they, you know, there's not enough Social Security, there's not enough uh, other help uh, for them to even even make it. And uh, like a lot of America, a lot of elderly people still have people living in their homes, and they're trying to support themselves and other people. And it's really really uh, difficult. Uh, road for a lot of folks. So let's do all that we can to help and get uh, non-perishable food items gathered up uh, before the end of the month. So we still have a couple of weeks so we can make a big run and let's really, really show out and uh, show the help center uh, how much we can help them out and the people of Henry County. Any other announcements? Tuesday night at the Very good. Uh, I also have a pretty major announcement. I was handed this little card last Sunday after church, and uh, the person that wants the announcement said, handed it to me and said, you can announce this if you want to. I said, well, yeah. So uh, this is for everyone. You are invited to the wedding of Kellen and Seth. Ceremony at 4 o'clock on September 23rd with a reception to follow at 5 p.m. It's going to be at 501 Thomas Hill Road in Madison, Indiana. And they've given a web address to RSVP. And I am honored and privileged to say that I will be performing the ceremony. So I'm very, very excited about that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hang this on the bulletin board back there. Uh, you can snap a picture with your phone or whatever you need to do. And hello, it'll be backwards to you guys, but that's okay. Uh, maybe, you, maybe you can get something out of that. Uh, or maybe I'll take a picture and post it. I'll take a picture and post it. So anyway... Uh, and the thousands that watch us on, on Facebook oh, might show up for the wedding. So oh, no. brace yourselves, uh, Seth and Kellen. But anyway, very excited about these young people who are making a commitment before God and before the world that they want to be have a godly marriage 
And uh, I just think that's just such a special thing, especially these days. So very excited about that. So that's your announcement for today. Any other announcements, Miss Lynn? I saw Daniel Dawkins this past week. No way. He was was in town. The old the old man. The old man and all his youngins. Yeah. Yep. Yep, they keep him clean cut in the military. So he's but uh, I know he and Sandra and the kids are doing well and so proud of him. And uh, I I wish I would have known. I'd love to have seen him. Any uh, any other announcements today? No? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we just praise you and thank you, Lord Jesus. So so many great things. Uh, our, our college kids are doing so well in college and growing up on us. And, and, and our kids that we've watched grow up in this church, getting married. Uh, many of them having kids and have families. And we're just so, so thankful, Lord Jesus. And we just praise you and thank you and help us to continue to raise kids that go on to have families and godly lives. And Lord Jesus, we're just so thankful for that. And we, we trust in your promises that we try to raise them the best we can. And Lord Jesus, that they will, they will continue and follow along a path that leads and follows you, Lord. Father, Lord, just uh, be with us in all the things that we are involved in now. Father God, we just pray that you'll bless the Help Center. Help us to help with that. Lord, be with the Damu Christian Mission in Haiti, Lord Jesus, as we continue to to help and try to bless them. Lord, uh, be with the Campbellsburg's Kids Kitchen. And Lord, that we can continue to help and bless them and the children of Henry County and and all the other things, the the Family Resource Center, and all the things you've allowed us to be a part of, Father God, Lord Jesus, I just pray that we're a blessing to our community, to our county, our state, and even our world, Lord. We praise you and thank you for the opportunity to be here to worship you today. Let us sing to you, pray to you, and take in your word, Lord Jesus. Make it a part of our hearts and a part of our lives. And Lord, we just praise you and thank you for all things. Because all good things come from you. In your name we pray. Amen. Let's stand and let's sing some of these great songs of our faith.
We can do that one since you already have it up there. I uh, know. That's okay. That's all right. That's what you text it. Is it? It probably is.
we need him. I'm not real sure how anybody could go through this life and not realize they need him. I just, I just can't imagine. I can't imagine trying to traverse and navigate through this life without Jesus. I just can't even imagine it. Do we have any uh, praises, prayer requests this fine morning? Ernie? Yes, for uh, Maui, Hawaii, and uh, what complete devastation. I don't know if you've seen videos or, or pictures from there. Um, apparently, it was just, it just raged so fast, and it was just, there was no escaping it for some people. So we pray for those families and the loss, and, you know, it's expensive enough to live in Hawaii, uh, but to imagine trying to have to rebuild or, or those kind of things or restart your life. So just uh, be in prayer for those, those folks there. Uh, other praises or prayer requests this morning? Miss Midge? Uh, my husband is better. Uh, he is improving. He's still restricted from lifting, pushing, pulling, or riding a bowl, which is very hard on him. Oh, no doubt about that. Uh, my son-in-law is improving from his second back surgery. Mm. Still can't lift the baby, and she goes, up, Daddy. And when she oh. takes it, she cries. So oh. um, uh, I go down, uh, when Jennifer does the well, she has to keep the, keep the kids till she gets home. And 
both kids have a 102 temperature or stick with the virus right now. Yeah. And I have a blessing on Robbie's barber's shop. George and I were so concerned that we wouldn't make it, but it's doing excellent. Oh, praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes. All right. Very good. <laughs> Go Bedford. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> Miss Vicki? So continue to keep her in your prayers and Miss Vicki and we'll pray for good results uh, with with your uh, colonoscopy and not all that and that the bacteria will be taken care of even though the side effects from the antibiotics are not much fun. Hopefully they'll still take care of the good care, take care of the problem. Um, other praises, prayer requests this morning? Miss Pam? Prayer requests I want to add our list. A young lady named Lori Dillon, D-I-L-L-O-N. Um, she's the daughter of uh, some of our good friends in Trumbull County, and she's been diagnosed with breast cancer in both breasts, as I mm. understand it. Um, and uh, she also had, at the time, a blood clot in her lung and a kidney stone. Um, oh, my word. She's a very, uh, she's a very Christian young lady. In fact, I think her, I think her husband may be a pastor or a lay minister. Um, and um, so, anyway, she's got a long, long road ahead of her. And um, if you would just keep her in, in your prayers. How old is Lori? She's older than you. She is. Yeah, she might be fifty. Yeah, she might be fifty. So, Lori Dillon, keep Lori and her family. In your prayers, please. Anything else before we go to the Lord in prayer? Of course, uh, many schools started back uh, this past week, so continue prayers for staff and um, teachers and students and safety and and yeah. Please keep the Jefferson County folks in your prayers. Okay, so in uh, Oldham County we have 18 schools. In Shelby County, we have 13 schools. In Jefferson County, there's 172 schools. It's it's one it, for the size of city that it is. It has one of the most unbelievable needs for transportation. And guess what? We can't keep enough bus drivers in our outlying counties. They have nowhere near enough people, and now they really won't, because I'm sure some people probably walked away the other day and won't come back so just prayers for the for the kids staff people it's so frustrating and then you're getting phone calls and yelled at by parents on top of it and it's it's going to be it's going to be rough it's going to be a rough rough year for them but hopefully and lord will and they'll get that straightened out um, anything else before we go to lord in prayer bob uh, you pray for uh, She's done three and a half hours from here somewhere. And uh, she's been working several days now, 12, 14 hour days on a startup, and she'll have to travel back. She chose to stay last night so she didn't have to go back Monday, but uh, she'll be driving back sometime. Sometime. <laughs> yeah, you know, sometime. Probably after another 12, 14 hour yeah. day. And, uh, then also, if you'd pray for me and just. Uh, uh, really, I'm about 
started with some of the kind of hits on many of my insecurities in uh, We, we know somebody who's good at that. Nothing like threatening me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so continue to keep Bob and Paul in your prayers. And let's continue to keep one another and our families and all of our situations because everybody's got something they need prayer for. So let's make sure we continue to actively be in prayer for one another. Uh, Maddie? Um, Grace and Matthew. Yes, our neighbors... Uh, She's having all kinds of health issues, uh, hip and back, and um, she manages the outlet mall in Simpsonville. She has a highly stressful job, and uh, so continue to keep her uh, in your prayers. She's having surgery Friday. Yeah. It's a lot of gastro. And yeah, it's a, a rebuild it, it, yeah. of the lower GI, essentially. And, a, and yeah. female. Also, yeah. Female. yeah. But she's just a delight with Maddie. Maddie yeah. put on a show for her out in the driveway last night with her tush and her bubbles and she she's just she's a wonderful lady. So we pray for Debbie. <laughs> and also Mary Ann, our neighbors, having um, a stent put in her heart Wednesday. Yeah, the third third stent in her heart, so in the same artery, so Keep Miss Mary Ann in your prayers too. Anything else? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord Jesus, you've heard all these. You knew all these. But Lord Jesus, I know from decades, years of experience, we see when we come together as a body believers and we have determined that we're going to be prayer warriors, what we see is answers. What we see is you working. So, Father God, Lord Jesus, we lift these all up to you, knowing, not just trusting, but knowing that you're at work in every one of these situations, Father God. Lord Jesus, we may not always like the outcome. We may not always see what's coming, but you know better than we do. And we need to understand that you know what's best for each and every one of us. But Father God, Lord Jesus, I pray that through time as we continue to see miracle after miracle, result after result, healing after healing, change after change, that we'll, our faith will grow. And Father God, we'll feel even more confident to share our faith with those around us and those we meet and those we see. Now, Father God, that we won't have overcoming fear we will all be able to overcome fear because of our faith faith over fear lord jesus father god lord the world keeps telling us lies after lie after lie father god thank you that we know the truth lord jesus be with uh miss dylan be with everyone father god that we've asked for prayer for today be with bob and paula be with mary ann be with Debbie, Lord Jesus, be with uh, all the people that we've uh, talked about and mentioned already this morning and those we haven't. Lord, be miss, with Miss Vicky. Lord Jesus, Father, be with Midge's family. Continue to heal George. Thank you for blessing Robbie and his business, Lord Jesus. Father God, we just pray that he sits in that bar bar barber's chair one day and he just goes, thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. And Lord Jesus, uh, just thank you for everything. You're just so good. You're so mighty, and you're so amazing. Father God, be with everybody on our prayer list, those we've mentioned, those we haven't. Father God, continue to bless us as a church as we reach out to try to impact those around us, Lord. Father God, continue to give us the resources that we need to make sure people have what they need. Lord Jesus, we thank you and praise you for all our opportunities. Lord Jesus, Thank you. Forgive us for our sins. Forgive us for when we fall short. Lord Jesus, thank you. We praise you. Amen. Our communion song today says it all. We're going to sing it uh, together this beautiful morning. Jesus paid it all. It's number 146 in your hymnal. I hear the 
Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Thy me, thy all in all. Jesus made it all. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful to be gathered here today. We're so thankful for, for Jesus and that he, he paid it all so that uh, our, our sins could be washed away. We give thanks for, for being able to, to gather here to, to praise you, to worship you, and to and, and be with us as, as we lift up all those on our, our prayers and concerns list and uh, let them know that you're, you're there, that you're, you're willing to, to walk with them and give them strength. In your name we pray. Amen. thank you so much for all of the amazing blessings that you pour out on us day by day and even Lord minute by minute 
Mudas being like the woman with the coin, Lord, and, and sacrifice, not because of our abundance, Lord, but because we love you. And, and we choose to sacrifice, Father God, for you. And take what we've given, Lord, and just multiply it to bless your kingdom. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, uh, if you would, if you have your Bibles with you, I'd love for you to open them up with me to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, beginning with verse 37. Romans chapter 8, beginning with verse 37. We're going to start a new series this morning and over the next three weeks we're going to be talking about some things and uh, this is where we're going to begin today Romans chapter 8 beginning with verse 37 no in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I'm convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will what? will be able to separate us from the love of God that, it, that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So he's gone through this long list of all kinds of things, uh, even spiritual things, but he makes sure he closes it out with nor anything else in all creation. So when we say nothing can separate us from the love of God, that truly means nothing. Nothing. Nothing the enemy has ever thought of will be enough to keep him from loving us. There's nothing in all creation. I just wanted to make, really make sure uh, we drive that point home. Now, if you'll flip over just a few books over to John, 1 John, I should say. 1 John chapter 5, beginning with verse 13. 1 John chapter 5, beginning with verse 13. We'll see what it has to say to us here. Because when we come to the Word of God, what we need to make sure we are doing is we're asking questions, and we're looking, we're searching for answers, right? Isn't that why we go to the Bible? We go to the Bible to learn answers, so that's exactly what we're doing. So this is 1 John chapter 5, beginning with verse 13. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. So that you may know you have eternal life. This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, 
Whatever we ask, we know that we have what we have asked of him. See, there's a confidence that comes with knowing, isn't there? To know something, to be sure of something. Okay, so think about your life right now. Think about what you are going through. Think about your family, your job, your home, all, all the things around you, even this church. Uh, maybe if you're still in school, your school, your teachers, think about all these things. What are you sure of? What are you certain of? What can you be certain of that every time you go someplace, you're going to get what you need? All of these things, what are you sure of? What assurances do we have that we can hold on to and look forward to our future? You know, there are people who are almost in constant thought about their future of what's coming up, right? I mean, there are people who, who, who think about the future and they, they, they have their five-year plan, right? Some people do that every year. When they start their new organizer, their new calendar, or, or they start planning, they plan out the next five years. So they already have four years planned, so they add another fifth year. Some people do 10-year plans. But how sure can we be when we plan in that much detail? Well, most of us that are a little older know that life throws you way too many curveballs, for everything to work out exactly the way that we plan it to. And most reasonable people, reasonable people know that. But what can we be sure of? What's the old saying? You can be sure of death and taxes, right? You can be sure of these things. What can we be sure of? How sure of are we in our future? How sure are you that you really know Jesus? I mean, really think about it. How sure are you that you know him? I mean, really know him. I mean, everybody in this room could certainly say we know about him and we know things about him. I would hope and pray with all my heart that we could all say we know Jesus. We know him. I would, I would love to think that every person seated in a church, a home church, church building, wherever it's at, all over the world, that every person engaged in a worship service somewhere can say with pure confidence that they know Jesus. How are sure, how sure are you that you are truly saved? How certain are you of your salvation? How sure are you that you are saved? How sure are you or is that God is real and that he loves you? How sure are you? How certain? How much assurances do you have that God is real and he loves you? How sure are you that you are assured a heavenly home that Jesus Christ promised that he has gone on before us to prepare for us? For, for each one of us, really? For every human being that says they believe in Jesus and, and he's gone ahead of us to prepare a place for us, really? Is that really true? How sure are we of that? Well, you have come to the right place. Over the next three weeks, over the next three Sundays, we're going to take a close look at what assurances we have with Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. So hopefully each Sunday over the next three weeks, we'll leave with a little more confidence than we came with. A little more assurance than maybe we even came in with today. And life seems to have an ebb and flow where sometimes our confidence is high, sometimes our confidence is medium, and sometimes our confidence has been shaken. Sometimes our faith gets shaken. That's normal. That's normal. But we need to be sure, just like it says here in 1 John 5, 13 and 15, we 
should be sure. We should have confidence. And there should be nothing in all of creation that will make us feel like we're separated from the love of God. Nothing should separate us. First of all, what good is it to even believe in Jesus if we can't or won't believe that we're truly saved? That we're truly redeemed by Jesus Christ? What good is it to believe in Jesus if you don't believe in his salvation? If you don't believe that he can do what he promises that he can do, what good is it? We can truly be sure that our Father God has already won the fight for us. And that if we accept him as our Lord and Savior, that we can be secure in our salvation and our heavenly citizenship. In 2 Peter 1.10, it tells us, Concerning the salvation, the prophets who spoke of the grace that was to come to you searched intently and with the greatest care. Let me tell you something about the people that you read about in the Bible. Particularly the prophets. The people that kept sharing the fact that a redeemer was coming. A deliverer was coming. They kept promising and promising because that's what God was telling them, right? Over and over. You see, all the people that gave us good news about Jesus in the Old Testament, guess who they were looking for? Guess who they were speaking to? All of us. All of us. Everyone who was searching for hope. Everyone searching for an answer. That's who the prophets were speaking to. They were speaking to you and me. They searched intently and with the greatest care to make sure we knew Jesus was coming and many of the promises. All of heaven. Listen, if you're lost, if, if you don't know, if you're not sure about your salvation, if you're not sure you're safe, heaven is searching for you intently and with the greatest care. If you just don't know, all of heaven, heaven is searching intently for you. For you to go, I need Jesus. And I want to be sure. God will leave no stone unturned in order to find you and find you in your state of need. God will not quit on you. God will never give up on you. And that's part of the promise that we just read in 1 John. He cannot be separated from you by anything in all of creation. There's nothing that can separate you from the love of God. No matter how heinous a crime you've committed. No matter how long you've ran in the opposite directions of, of Jesus. No matter how many times you've slighted him. You, no matter how many times you've spoken his name in vain, no matter how deeply you feel like you have hated God, it will not separate you from the love of God. You cannot make God not love you. And we must be sure of that. Jesus will find you and Jesus will save you. He will rescue you. And so one thing we can be sure of, God's call on our lives is sure. We can be sure that God calls us and God loves us. Because we're his children, he has elected us. And nothing can separate us from the love of God.
We just read a few minutes ago in Romans 8.38 that we can be sure that we receive God's abiding love. It tells us that not death, nor life, Angels or demons, nor the present or the future, or any powers, nigh or height or death or anything else in all the creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. There is nothing and no one who can separate us from God's great love. His love is abiding with us right now, last night, yesterday, and it'll be there tomorrow and forever of his abiding love, we can be sure. We can be sure of God's abiding love. Romans 8, 16 says this. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Listen, God even communicates with us. He speaks to us. And if you're willing and open to listen... You'll know he speaks to you. You'll know that he communicates with you through our spirit. And he'll tell us that he loves us. And he looks upon us as his children. He truly does. He truly is the perfect father. And we truly are his children. And being a child of God, we are recipients of an incredible inheritance. There's an amazing inheritance for us. And the first gift of inheritance is our salvation and how we can be assured. We can be certain of that regardless of what the world says or shows us. We can be sure of our salvation. He wants us to have access to all that he offers to his children. And we are his children. Yes, God will probably discipline us at some point in our faith walk. He will discipline us when we don't love the what people the way we're supposed to love people. When we don't act the way we're supposed to act. When we don't do what we're supposed to do. And he instructs us to do things. And sometimes we just sin and we forget about where we are and what he's done for us, don't we? Sometimes we do. We forget. We lose focus in our faith, and we sin. We mess up. But every parent at some point, right, moms and dads, at some point we've had to discipline our children, every one of us, right? Brooke, did Pam ever have to discipline you? No, but there are exceptions to every rule, right? No, but we've all had to discipline our children. We were all disciplined by our parents. Oh, Lord, my, my poor mother and father. But that discipline, typically, that discipline leads to greater peace, joy, and love. Respect. And the, it's no different when God disciplines us. You see, when God disciplines us, he's drawing us closer. And he's trying to make us more certain and more sure that we can count on him. Even when we have to say, Daddy, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Daddy. Sorry, Father. And He forgives us. Our being God's children, you can be sure. You can be sure of that. You are God's child when you follow Jesus Christ and accept Him as your Lord and Savior. Not only are we assured that we are His children, we can be sure that we'll see our ascended Lord. I love this, okay? If I get excited, any more excited than I already am usually, but if I get excited, this is why. We can be sure and certain that we are going to see the ascended Jesus. Oh, come on. How can we not be excited, right? Listen to 1 John 3, 1 and 2. 
How great is the love of the Father is lavished on us that we, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. So we should never be shocked when people don't understand when we're Jesus people, where we're coming from or what we mean. They don't know him. We should never be surprised. We shouldn't even really be defensive because you don't know what you don't know. And if they don't know Jesus, and I agree with you, there should be no excuse for anybody, especially in America, not to know Jesus. But the world we live in is the world we live in. What people don't know, they don't know. But the scripture goes on to say, Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when he appears, when he, Jesus, appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. When we set eyes on Jesus, the ascended king, we're going to be changed. We're going to be different. We're going to be far better than we ever could have been on our own. When we see the ascended Jesus, we are going to truly be transformed. And it's an exciting thing. It's not a scary thing. It's a great thing. Everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. Why should we follow Jesus? And when we follow him, why should we obey him? And why should we trust him? Because we should want to be like him. We should purify ourselves. Those things we know better, we should consciously make sure we do them less and less and less and do good things and godly things more and more and more. <coughs> of being able to see the living, ascended God, you can be sure. You will see the living, ascended Jesus. You will. The Bible promises us one day every knee will bow, every tongue will confess. Just hope that that kneel in that confession isn't too late. You're either going to be kneeling and confessing in terror or you're going to be kneeling and confessing in praise. But every knee, every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess. There are two more things that I want to be to cover today that we can be assured of. One is that everyone who believes and calls on the name of Jesus will receive a crown of righteousness. Every person who believes and calls on the name of Jesus will receive a crown of righteousness. How do I know this? Because 2 Timothy 4, 8 promises us this. 2 Timothy 4, verse 8. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. Everyone, do you long for his appearing? Do you long for it? Do you long for the sky just to open up? And here comes Jesus on a white horse and the, all the armies of heaven are coming to get you. All those who are ready for his appearing. Of receiving a crown of righteousness, you can be sure. You can be sure. 
The final assurance we're going to talk about today is eternal life. Eternal life. What better to wrap this up today than to know that we can expect and trust and be sure that he has actually gone on before us and he's actually prepared a place in heaven just for us. In 1 John 5, 13, we're told, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know, that you may know that you have eternal life. Knowing is assurance. Knowing is a guarantee. Knowing is a certainty. Being certain and sure and knowing that we have eternal life. The very promise that we could spend all of eternity with the very being that created us. And the very being that created us who has loved us forever and will love us forever. All this should be enough for us to pursue him, shouldn't it? These kinds of promises, these kind of assurances, shouldn't they be enough for us to pursue him? To chase after him? After all, hasn't the Bible just told us today that all of heaven for all of eternity has, a, has pursued you? All of heaven has pursued you, you and you, every one of you, every one of us. All of heaven pursues us. When we know these promises, shouldn't we pursue Christ? Shouldn't that be enough for us to pursue him? Listen, of having eternal life, you can be sure. Sure. So, what can we be sure of that we know so far today? We can be sure of our call and election from God. He wants you in the family. He wants you. He wants you. Your call and your election from God is sure. An abiding love. You know what abiding means with you, active. Intimate, active, happening, showing, abiding, always with you. Of God's abiding love, you can be sure. Of God's being a God's child, you can be sure. You can be sure that you're God's child. Of being able to see the ascended living God you can be sure. Upon receiving a crown of righteousness, ladies and gentlemen, you can be sure of having eternal life. You can be sure. You can be certain. So next week in part two of Are You Sure? We're going to learn about how to obtain these assurances. And the part that God's word and his promises play in it. We're going to go even deeper than we did today. So make sure, make sure you join us next Sunday as we continue the series. As we continue to answer the question, are you sure? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we just praise you and thank you. Lord, we truly want to be sure so father god lord jesus give us the assurances that your promises are true and and we know you show us we see it all the time father god you've never let us down you're always with us always your abiding love knowing we're your children the promise that we'll see you We'll see you. We'll be with you someday. Father God, Lord Jesus, all these things, Father God, put in our hearts and our minds so that they are part of us all the time. 
Father God. And Lord Jesus, the assurance, the promise that we can be sure that nothing in all of creation could ever separate us from your love, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Father God, be with us, guide us, lead us, help us. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn today is number 197. I thought this might be appropriate. Number 197. Let's stand and sing this great Fanny Crosby song, Blessed Assurance. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation. Purchase of God, born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst on my sight, angels descending bring from above, echoes of mercy, whispers of love, this is my story. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I and my Savior. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. Praising my Savior all the day long. Amen. So if you're sure of your salvation, you can leave here today with so much certainty, so much confidence that no matter what you face in life, he's got you. He's got you. But if you're not sure, if you're not sure, if you're not sure out there, if you're watching and you're not sure, you're not certain of your salvation, you're welcome to stay here if you're in the building. You're welcome to stay here. I'd love to pray with you and talk to you if you're not certain of your salvation. Or maybe you've never confessed that publicly before. Today would be a great day to do that. If you're watching online, I urge you to contact me. I would love to meet with you, pray with you, and we'll make sure that the next time you walk away, you'll be certain of your salvation. The enemy tries to lie to us constantly about the state of our souls, but there's only one truth. That when you are saved by Jesus Christ, you are saved. You are saved. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, as we leave this building today, Father God, let us leave with confidence. 
confidence in you, confidence that we are your child, that we will see you, that you are preparing a place for us, that nothing in all of creation can separate us from you. Lord Jesus, that you have promised us eternal life, that we will spend all of eternity praising you and being with you, Father God. What an incredible promise we can trust in. Lord, be with us all, be with everybody on our prayer list. Lord Jesus, take us safely out of this building and to where we're going. Lord, thank you so much for everything. Thank you for these lovely, beautiful, wonderful children of yours that I have the honor and privilege of spending time with each week. Father God, thank you so much for everything. In your precious, holy, amazing name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you all.